What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinists, continuing our live coverage of IMTS 2022 in Chicago. And right now we are at IMCO, joined by my friend Tim. Tim, thank you very much for having us. Hey, thank you. How's thank the show you. been so far? Fantastic show, very, very busy, great turnout so far. So a lot of great people to talk to. It's nice to be back, that's yes, for sure. Yes, it is, absolutely. And I know that we have some pretty exciting new tooling behind us from IMCO that yeah. we're gonna talk about. Absolutely, absolutely. So I believe we wanted to start over here with the new power path. What are we looking at here? I'm seeing a lot of flutes. Right. I mean, if we're going over here, if you can see this here, I don't know if I've ever seen that many flutes well, on a cutter. That's a 13 flute tool, definitely a specialty type of item. It takes a very powerful machine to run that tool. But basically, that type of tool is related to these other products because they're all part of a certain type of machining program that you would run in called high efficiency machining. So a lot of people call it quota milling, uh, dynamic cutting, volume mill, if you want adaptive to use brand clear. Names, adaptive, yes. Uh, Salicam has a program on this also. And all these tools we make specifically for that tool path. They're only made to run in that tool path, not in traditional type of machining. And why is that based on this kind of geometry? Because I'm not familiar with what would make this so suited for Well, it's a good question. And using that type of tool path, basically it features a very light radial step over and a very deep axial cut. So you need to put certain features inside the tool, okay, in order to make it run in a stable fashion, uh, reduce the amount of harmonics, and to be able to achieve very high metal removal rates. And so everything about these tools is designed around running in those tool paths. So we start with our seven fluid end mill, and we go to a nine fluid, 11 flute, and then of course the one you picked up, the 13 flute. Ever. And like you said, basically the more flutes it has, the less or the higher power I need in my machine. Yes, yes. So let's say you're you're running a, a lighter duty machine, maybe about 12 to 15 horsepower. Probably not going to be the tool for you, the 13. Not to start. But the entry into that would be the seven flute, and it will run fantastic. It'll take a light to medium duty machine and turn it into a high end machine for the type of output that you can get with your metal removal rates. And just so I know, because I've never used something like this, do you use these simply for those roughing passes or can you actually finish with these as well? You can do both, because again, because you're running a light radial step over, I mean, that's kind of a feature or characteristic of a finished pass. But the real key to them is to actually do your roughing, because again, we want a high metal removal rate. The old adage is time is money. That's what we're going for with all this. And with these, I mean, typically when I've seen high flute counts, that generally means hard material. What kind of materials are these really geared towards? Can all you materials. do the hard stuff or just the soft stuff? All materials, all materials. That's the beauty of high, high efficiency machining, all right, is we can take these tools and we can apply them to anything from a 1018, 4140, get into the stainless steels, 300 series, PA series sta uh, stainless, up to titanium, we even prefer to run like the Inconels also with type, this type of tool in that tool pad. With that same tool, absolutely, same one. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, what kind of shops are you seeing putting these in right now? Obviously, who are using trochordial milling? Well, what kind of shops really gravitate towards these? A whole range of shops. It really depends on the mentality of the shop. So does the shop want to be kind of progressive and be able to embrace this and save some time? So certainly there's a lot of job shops out there that do that, especially since these tools won't run in a range of materials. It's fantastic for that. And Less again, tools they, in the toolbox. They may have lighter or medium duty machines. These tools will make them high performance machines. And then of course, the big shops, the production shops, time is money for them as well. They can embrace these as well. They're trying to get every last second out of their program. Absolutely, absolutely. Now I know we wanted to take a peek at these ones over here, the Enduro series. What am I looking at here? I'm seeing again a higher flute count than what I'm probably used to. Well, the Enduros are a family of five and we have some seven flute end mills and it's probably our best selling tool. Um, five flute end mills, I like this product because it's kind of a dual purpose product. It's close to your general purpose four flute type of tool, which means that you can run it in a lot of general machining applications and program the tool path in a traditional fashion. So rough and cuts, a 30% step over, one times diameter in Z, or you know, one times diameter deep in Z on a slot cut. Kind of not the dynamic milling, but certainly with the traditional cuts, the five flute gives an attic cutting edge, all right, over the four flute. So it can right. lead to much higher tool life than your standard four flute. 
but it also uh, leads to a much higher, uh, better cycle time and a higher metal removal rate. And we like to say it's all about the cubes. So what we want to do is get as many cubic inches out as possible, as quickly, because that's the best way to measure your efficiency. And this here, I have to ask, I'm seeing little cutouts out of these flutes. I am not very familiar with that. What's that all about? At MCO, we call that our CMS, or a chip management system. And that simply put is, we want to break up those chips, all right, as we, as we run through the material, especially on longer, deeper cuts, there's a tendency to sometimes get some stringy material out there. Again, like 1018, kind of yeah. gummy and everything. Well, we don't, want to, we don't want to keep that chip in the cutting zone. We want to have to recut it because it's much harder the second time around. Absolutely. So we like to get it out of there. So we stagger these, uh, these notches, the CMS, in order to break up the chips to allow the, the air blast or the coolant to take it all away. And for these here, since we're looking at seven versus five, again, is this just for higher powered machines? No, actually, this, the seven flute adds a little extra dimension that it, it will require a little more power than the five, but they're, they're very closely related in geometry, oh, okay. and it'll simply add, allow for a higher metal removal rates. And the, and the beauty of all these tools is because they have a thicker core and some features that you may find in the, the high multi flute tools over there, you're gonna find that it, it's a nice transition from traditional type of tool paths to high efficiency machining tool paths. Good, good kind of transition that you go, way, yeah. You go back to that shop shop, they don't wanna use a lot of different types of tools, they can buy some of these and they can actually program it in both ways. And if you look transition. here, as you can see, these do come, it looks like, with radiuses, I assume, oh, for absolutely. different sizes, you can get whatever uh, radius here. We do a in lot in the aerospace industry, so we have to have all the radii, all of them. Ra radii, not radiuses. radiuses. I am a terrible machinist, uh, and I admit that. I. <laughs> now, if yes. we're heading back over this way a little bit, the pow our feed, power feed line. Yeah. I was taking a look at one of these before we started going. I don't know if I've ever seen a ball nose with staggered, I don't know if you call them sagger flutes. What would you call that? Because not all our flutes. flutes are going to the center. Right, right. So basically, in a, in a ball nose, in a full radius tool, normally you get two flutes coming to center. That's the way it goes. You can add as many flutes as you want in your traditional type of ball nose inbuilt. That's all it's going to be. We've come up with a way to take half the flutes and make them meet at the center so that you're cutting on zero. You're cutting on the full radius. So we have an eight flute design with four flutes coming to center. We have a three flute design, a six flute design with three flutes coming to center. Basically, this is gonna allow you to run any type of 3D contour operation, mm. and you're going to knock it out of the park as far as your cycle time, much improved speeds and feeds, because now you have more cutting edges engaged, and your tool life is gonna go through the roof. New tool for us, just came out, already selling a ton. The mold industry loves this. Uh, I was gonna say, this is mold making 101. Absolutely, absolutely. And I assume the finish on that that you can get is fairly impressive. Yeah, I mean, because how you're gonna program, you're gonna take five, five you know, 20, 20, 10, 10, five, five. That, it's fantastic. And for these ones over here, these are part of the same line. I'm seeing two flutes come to center. What's the thought process behind this and what are the benefits? Well, basically, anything you have to have a couple flutes come to center at any end mill like that so you can do any sort of plunge cut, any moves in Z, whether it's going to be a ramp or a direct move in Z. This is going to be a new tool that we're going to be introducing. We're introducing it at the show. We're going to have it out in production in about 60 days. And it's the evolution of some of our products where we're like, if you want to machine in a traditional fashion, but you want to elevate it uh, cycle of uh, output on your metal removal rates, all right, that's the tool we want to bring to the table. We have some special grinds on that that allow you to be very aggressive with your entry move. Oh, so really? whether uh, you have a four foot or five foot ML, you may have a, a straight line ramp angle of three and a half degrees with those. That one's going to run 15. Really? 15 degrees, so straight line ramp, or a helical ramp down to your Z, we're gonna save a lot of time. Super aggressive. Work on those. Absolutely. It's gonna be a fun tool for us. We can't wait to get it out of What kind of shops do you see putting these in? Is this more of an aerospace type thing? Is this a job shop type thing? Again, the beauty of this, it has runs in a wide range of applications. So anytime, if you're running into a Ferris material, and we've also te tested it out in some ink canals in our, in our lab, it's run great on all that. So. You know, we, we love it as a job shop tool. It may be more expensive than your plain Jane four flute end mill, but again, you know, and I understand with job shops, they don't always test the tool life because of the nature of the, of the jobs moving in and out. We can always measure time. 
So if we can help them get the job on and off the machine faster, that's the way, that's what we want to bring to the table. And it's going to pay for itself yeah. much faster. I mean, yeah, it's got a little bit higher of a setup cost, but most good things do. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we can't wait. We can't wait for that to be out. Make sure you guys stay tuned from these for Emco. Now, if we want to learn more about Emco, where can we find you guys online? Oh, www.mcousa.com. Follow us on Facebook, you know, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, we're on all that. And of course, you're going to be here at IMTS all week long. All week, all week long. Make sure you stop in and see them. Tim, thank you very all much right, for your time. Thank you. Have a, Have great, a day. great day.